Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month, I thought we would focus on a feature that I have not talked about before, which is the ability of your Plex server to work also as a DLNA server. And why this is important is because DLNA has been around longer than Plex, I think since 2005 or so. And there's a lot of old dumb TVs out there that do have some network capability that support the DLNA standard. Additionally, there are audio playback devices like home receivers that can plug into your network and play back music over DLNA as well. And your Plex server can provide the media along with some of the metadata. So you don't have to keep multiple servers for doing these types of functions. And we're gonna demo how this works here in just a second. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see how DLNA works through your Plex server. Now, to enable DLNA, you need to go into your Plex web app and look for the DLNA portion of your server settings, and there you will see a checkbox to enable the DLNA server, and you can leave the rest of this stuff blank, and then you click Save Changes, and what this will do is turn on the DLNA server option on your Plex server if that wasn't already checked off. And now that that's done, we have our Plex server, of course, working with Plex apps, but now we can also work with some of these older devices. And on my Windows laptop here, I have an app loaded up called DLNA Browser that kind of simulates what it looks like to use a DLNA client on a TV or an audio device. So we're gonna start here and then I'll show you some examples of it working out in the wild. All right, so now that we have the DLNA server enabled on our Plex server, it is now on the network and available for DLNA clients to pick up. And this is what's so cool about DLNA. It's been around for so long that very old devices that were made back in 2008, but also new devices that were made just last week will likely see this Plex server available and you can start browsing media on it. On my Samsung TV upstairs, a newer one, it shows up right on the uh, home screen there, along with my HD home run here. Now, if I click on my Plex server, what it will do, and I'll zoom out here so you can see, is it will give us three options. We can look at video, music, or photos. I'm gonna start with video here, and what I'll see immediately are my libraries that are on my Plex server. Now, a couple important things to note here is that DLNA does not use any kind of authentication. So if you have libraries that are hidden on your Plex server, they will likely appear here because it's going to basically log itself in as the main user on your Plex account. Nobody from outside can get in, but anyone on your network would be able to browse these network folders. So I would suggest if you are very careful about what media you share with your family, make sure the DLNA feature is disabled so they can't just pop in and browse around. But if you don't care about that, uh, you will be able to, for example, watch recorded DVR videos that I've got here in my DVR library. And if I click on that, what we get here are a bunch of options. Now I could look at all the shows that have been recorded, but because Plex presents its metadata to the DLNA client, you can browse a little bit more granularly. So for example, if I wanted to look for a specific genre, I could search through all the different genres that Plex picks up in its metadata for the things that it has recorded. And if I go over to Game Show here, I had recorded Alex Trebek's last episode of Jeopardy, and here it is inside of the genre folder. And if I just click on play here, uh, this will play back. Here we go, right over here. <laughs> There's a couple of layers you gotta drill down. Uh, but once you start playing here, it is up and running and playing back. Now, this will show up as something that my main user watched on my Plex server. However, it doesn't record uh, a bookmark. So if I get to the middle here and then leave it, it's not going to remember that. So that's one little thing that doesn't get passed back to the server. But it will show that my user did spin up this episode of Jeopardy and I could... Uh, go back and watch it on my main Plex app a little bit later on. 
Now remember, we're browsing here on a computer, so this might look a little different on your TV, but this is kind of the gist of how Plex will present the DLNA information. You get a similar feature here on the movie side, and one of the neat things is that movies have a lot of metadata attached to them, so I could even go through on a DLNA device a bunch of directors that I am interested in and maybe drill down to the movies that that director did. So if I go over here to George Lucas, you can see the Star Wars movies that are attached to him on my server. So those are some of the things that you can do beyond the basics, but you can also just browse it as a folder if you want as well. And one advantage perhaps to using Plex as your DLNA server versus a app or a uh, NAS built-in feature is that you don't have to maintain data in two different places. You can have Plex manage all of it for you. So if you have some old device, you can very easily navigate through your library that way. Another cool thing that I noticed on here is that I have a home movies library where I just put some videos that I took with my phone. I don't do too much with this, but it's something I may want to work a little bit more on. And I can go here and browse by the year the video was created. So I've got one of here of my daughter from uh, 2013. She's now a fifth grader, so time goes by pretty quick here, but it's kind of fun just to be able to load up some old TV in a spare bedroom and have access to the same media that my modern TV has. Now, if we jump over here to photos, it's a very similar experience. So I could browse all my photos, but I also can drill into the Plex metadata. I could look at whatever was taken with my Apple uh, phone here, for example, or my Nikon camera. I could look at uh, different uh, apertures and shutter, shutter speeds that I've done, or uh, simply go by year here as well. So again, really cool that this is all still here for devices that don't support a Plex app natively. Let's take a look now at music. Now, music might be the most useful feature here of the DLNA server function, and the reason is is that there are a lot of modern music players that can play music over the network and they use DLNA to do it. And many of them support lossless audio like FLAC, including my home theater receiver upstairs as a Yamaha receiver. And I was able to browse my library and pull up my high resolution FLAC files without issue. It just plays right back over the network complete with thumbnails and other artwork and metadata. So if we jump in here, you can see we can browse by artist here. I can drill into Alanis Morissette, for example, and pick one of her albums. And then even some of this info about the album carries over as well. Now, of course, your device and its capabilities will vary, but this is the kind of stuff that you can expect from it. So really impressive stuff here, especially given the age in which this format has reached here for consumer electronics. Now in testing this, I'm noticing that playback counts and listening history are not being applied to music like they are on the video side. So TV shows and movies show up as being served inside of my Plex dashboard. I'm getting the uh, show that I'm watching in the history. On the music side, you don't get any of that. So the music plays back, you get all the metadata, but no data is recorded about the playback activity. Now, one thing I wanted to touch on for a little bit here is that if you have an older device, it may not be able to play back this media natively. So for example, if you've got a bunch of HEVC files for video on your server and your old TV doesn't support that, it won't play back. Plex does have some pretty technical uh, directions on their website, which I'll link in the video description, where you can set up profiles for specific devices on your network to force transcoding to get them to work. But it does not appear as though uh, transcoding is automatic here like it would be with a Plex client. So if you are really determined to get uh, some media playing on a device over DLNA with transcoding, it's possible, but it will require a bit of extra work. But for many devices that support video formats like H.264, a lot of your media, especially the stuff you recorded a decade ago on your phone, will likely play back on those old devices without issue. So that is DLNA in a nutshell, at least insofar as it relates to your Plex server. And if you've got a more recent modern television and you boot it up and you see your Plex server inside of its TV interface, it's likely picking up your Plex DLNA server. Now again, you can shut this off the same way you turned it on. So if you wanted to get that off your network, that's how you do it. But I have a feeling that a lot of you watching are having some ideas here about how to integrate 
Plex Media with older devices or devices that can't run a client. And again, I think the best target are some of those music players, but you might have an old PS3 or an Xbox kicking around, and that's one way to get this stuff working. One other cool little thing here, and this is not the subject of this video, but the HD Home Run also presents itself over DLNA, and you can actually watch TV in the same way for devices that don't support the HD Home Run natively. So really neat that this is still around and still useful, and I would love to hear from you in the comments section some ideas you might have for how you might integrate this DLNA feature into your personal media serving. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and I'm De Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.